and welcome to TRC Talks. I'm Casey Novak, Marketing Director for TRC Digital and your host for this episode. While some individuals are used to working remotely, COVID-19 has forced millions more employees into working from home. Working from home can come with benefits, but it can also come with challenges. That includes challenges for IT departments. For this episode, we're going to explore the work from home transition with two senior members of TRC's IT department, Rob Patrone and Jonathan Sanchez. So Rob, we're nearly five months into our work from home journey. Take me through the journey from an IT perspective. How has the team shifted priorities and activities during this pandemic? And we certainly had to shift priorities very quickly uh, during the early stages of the pandemic. We really identified four key areas, which was the supply chain uh, side of the house, our connectivity, our collaboration, and our information security. So as we focused on our supply chains, we needed to ensure that we could have computers, phones, peripherals, and other items for our staff. And that meant keeping back stock of of various items that we have available, uh, ready to be shipped out as needed. Secondly, as we looked at connectivity, um, we were really on an aging platform and uh, we were in the midst of a pilot to shift off of that solution, which really only housed maybe 600 people uh, daily that could get on remotely. And we moved into a new solution very quickly within, within about two weeks time. And, and that's obviously a big thank you to our internal teams. But that solution effectively has given us uh, access to 3,100 people online daily uh, company wide and with the ability to go up as high as we need to. Thirdly, on the collaboration um, and we had to shift very quickly into Microsoft Teams. We were in the midst of a rollout from Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams. And we effectively were able to push out and get onto that platform very quickly within about a month's time frame, which is a Herculean effort all by its own, as most, most folks are aware. So on the information security side of the house, I'll hand that over to Jonathan. I'm going to get back to security in a moment, but Rob, you mentioned collaboration, and it's so important in the workplace. Um, What are some must-have tools for organizations to collaborate effectively? Sure, sure. And obviously, during this troubled time, you know, certainly morale was key, right? And we needed to make sure we had a good platform to effectively talk to our employees. And so obviously, Microsoft Teams, which we chatted about in the first question, was near and dear to our heart and it gave us a reprieve to be able to have those discussions with our employees, have those virtual webinars, have those virtual meetings, uh, luncheons, happy hours, but also have a face-to-face uh, during that tough time. Secondly, we brought in Zoom to help us out with a lot of our webinars and outside um, meetings that we needed to have with our clients. And uh, Jonathan, I'll hand it over to you to chat a little bit about the security side of the house. but. Really, these various tools gave us that, uh, that ability to really connect with our employees and make sure we were productive uh, during this time. Going into the whole pandemic, Zoom was catching a lot of publicity for you know, their security measures and some people not seeing as proficient. We did do our due diligence and review the scenario and decided that it worked best that even Zoom would be a, uh, a good proficient platform and solution to provide for our users. What we did do is create a best practice document, which we sent out internally for our users to help ensure that they knew how to secure their Zoom meetings to ensure that people couldn't piggyback or join in on their conversations when being conducted with for business purposes, as we want to keep the near and dear data that we do house to ourselves. So I know with more employees working remotely, this can change and also expand some of the security concerns for a company. Um, Jonathan, can you speak to that a little more? Sure. The goal for us was to implement and ensure that we provide a solution, a VPN solution that's considered always on with the ability to always protect the machine and take the onus away from the user to ensure that on the technological side, we would do this for them to ensure that we were securing the environment. By being able to provide this solution also came with the zero trust model concept Um, Zero trust being secure model based on the principle of maintaining strict access controls 
Um, it's the ability that IT assesses the business continuity that everyone has, understanding the controls that we need to protect our environment, the data that we're entrusted with, and apply them so that users can conduct their business as usual without really feeling the technical difficulties and security measures. They're there to protect, protect them and allow them to conduct their jobs proficiently. Lastly, uh, we do train them. We do conduct our own internal phishing tests to ensure that they're aware and we drive awareness by sending monthly emails as well to help ensure that we keep them up to par with what's going on and what we're seeing trending in the world. And lastly, we'll continue to harden our own policies and controls with the shifts and um, with patching to ensure that our systems are up to date and we're gonna remove the vulnerabilities that might be on our risk landscape. So as we wrap up, any last thoughts or bits of advice to offer other IT departments? Uh, Jonathan, start with you. Sure. Um, tackling it from the security realm, um, data security is a very, very key component that all security managers and IT should look to thrive within. Um, another big issue is phishing. Phishing, since moving to remote landscapes or remote working scenarios, has been driven up 350% globally. Users are seeing an influx of phishing attacks on all ver varieties and levels. They're also becoming more sophisticated and complicated. So training your users and being able to empower them with what to look for um, with emails that they might you know, find to be legitimate but really aren't is key in ensuring that they don't click any links and are trained to be aware for what is coming in the near future. It also helps protect as our users are our focal point just as our technology is. And if not, they're probably one of the key proponents that help keep our environment secure. Really, just to add to that, you know, we certainly had to adapt and, and evolve very quickly uh, in this this new norm uh, that we've we've seen. We certainly had a few wins with connectivity and, and collaboration, and, and obviously information security, which Jonathan covered. But our focus really hasn't changed, and it's really on our employees. And customer focus is equally important as in this new norm because uh, you know staff are working in a different landscape. They're not working in an office. They're not working with our their staff directly and we need to continue to keep evolving. Um, you know, we've often heard the term in the marketplace, digital transformation, and honestly, that is now. Uh, we are continuing to evaluate all these new technologies that are in the marketplace. How can we make ourselves stronger than where we were yesterday? And that's really where we're at. Well, thank you both. This has been a great conversation. And thank you viewers for joining TRC Talks.